All right, here we are. Deeper Shades, live sessions number four. Still early. Thanks so much for a killer set. Thanks for having me. That was a uh, bomb. Chad blew up with uh, track IDs. We were laughing about that a little bit. Everybody wants to know what's being played. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the new generation of DJs. How did people do it before chatting? Uh, <laughs> realizing what kind of music DJs play. Right. I remember in the city where you also started first hamburg yeah like i mean that was not like my first club experiences but one of the really early club experiences i had and i remember one of the guys who played uh like drum and bass was kind of huge back then and the crude and dorfmeister guys just released the dj kicks yeah and there were a couple of drum and bass tracks on and the dj played it and i just went to him like that little countryside idiot what are you playing? What are you playing? <laughs> and um, that's why the day when people come to me and ask for the ID. Yeah. Uh, you if, tell them? Always. If always. they give me a phone, I just write it down or I make a picture. I mean, on those new CDJs, it's so easy. To just yeah, because yeah, snap that's, a shot that's true. Then, people ask and you tell them. Yeah. I have the problem if, if I try to pronounce the names the way they're supposed to be pronounced. So when they're German... And it's loud, and I'm not playing in Germany. Oh, perfect! And somebody's whose whose track is that? And I'm like, Till von Sein. Like, it's like very. What? They're like, huh? <laughs> so you gotta you gotta start like pronouncing names like they do <laughs> in that particular country. Yeah. So I haven't said Truby Trio in a long time. I, I'm supposed to say Truby Trio. Yeah, I mean they didn't release any music. So no. Yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. I think it's funny when it's French names. Oh my goodness! Yes, yes, or it, African it, it, names. Yeah, the there you go it, and that's what you do you start yelling it the music's there you try to turn on the monitors and they're like what <laughs> what so you're repeating yourself three times yeah. and then they start nodding and they just yeah. turn away yeah. <laughs> so you've been in LA for a week now yeah I played last uh, Wednesday and I had a weekend off and I you know when you're in the States turn it's always this where where do you spend your off days yeah and, what I did the last couple of years, because I have a bunch of friends in New York, I always stayed there, but it's it's just a bloody cheap, a uh, bloody expensive, expensive city. Yeah, very, yeah. And uh, the last two years I've been in Miami, always this time, and the, it's raining season, so it's kind of a win-win. Like, sometimes it's amazing weather, and sometimes it's just raining like crazy, so I thought this time I'd just stay in L.A. And, uh, you got lucky with the weather. Oh, I don't regret it. It's perfect. <laughs> So you've been partying. For, okay, you played last Wednesday. Wednesday. That was the first day, night here. You exactly. arrived Wednesday and then played. Uh, what's the name of the party? Couture? No. Uh, it's called Clinic Wednesday. Clinic. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. It's a weekly yeah. Wednesday night. In L.A. Yeah. Haven't checked that out. We talked about that last time you were here. I don't leave the house much anymore. Yeah. And that's a funny thing. You've been out. You've been visiting, like checking out some parties oh, while yeah. you're here. Plus, you're always making connections because you're running the booking agency. Yeah. Favorite party, L.A.? Um, as, a, as a guest, not as a DJ. Okay, so as a, yeah, I mean, I only played here three times, yeah. so I can't really judge what's my favorite party. No, the last week. Um, <laughs> I, I've been to that Red Bull event yeah. on Saturday where Harvey played. That was interesting, yeah. I would say fascinating, because he's just a brilliant DJ. When, yeah. you, when you're open-minded up for like diversity, it's I think one of the best DJs you can experience mm -hmm. these days. Um, and the event was great. But I think the best event was uh, was a Sunday daytime, mm -hmm. just downtown LA in a huge park. I don't. I, I oh, don't, Grand Park. Grand Park. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's know. Eduardo's thing. Exactly. Eduardo. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was just like a bunch of locals. I know yeah. a few of them who played there and uh -huh. for free. Yeah. People brought their kids, their dogs. It's um, an amazing party. He started it last year. Yeah. We went to one or two of them, and it's just been growing gradually. Yeah. And I just saw the pictures because this Sunday was the first one. That just looked like a madhouse. There, I mean, was, there was so many people. I mean, it was too hot for me to just stay out there. Yeah. Because there was only a few places where it was shade. Yeah, yeah. So everybody went there first so you had to be directly in the sun midday and so yeah. you melt in a way so in case i go with with my family i'm gonna bring a 
umbrella. Oh yeah, you should yeah. definitely do that. <laughs> yeah, we, we we did last last time we brought the blankets and everything like picnic Perfect. style. Picnic style exactly. There have been a lot of really cool park parties and which I think in LA should happen all the time with this weather. Oh yeah. You know, you have other areas in the world where they plan this stuff and then it gets rained down oh, yeah. like, you know, and they got to cancel it. Absolutely. Here that really doesn't happen. So yeah, that was good, right? Because that all the people the, yeah. and the sound was decent too. Did they, they manage to yeah. Really good setup. Yeah, they roll it there. in. Eduardo is doing a lot of stuff. He's running, he's owning the pattern bar. Yeah. So he's been doing his nights there and voodoo. And he just got another warehouse loft thing. So he's definitely working in LA. Yeah. Um, you are off to, what is next? Miami. Yeah. Uh, wait, today is Tuesday. I, I leave today, play on Thursday in Miami. Friday, I got off there. Saturday, New York. Sunday, nice. DC. And then straight back. Are you ever not on tour? <laughs> oh yeah i yeah. mean for yeah you know i still have like like you just said my daytime job with the agency so what mm -hmm. i try to do is like one month go nuts and then the next month keep it chill yeah. work on work on like tours for my artists and that so in may i only played like two shows i have one in berlin and one in france strasbourg mm -hmm. and um now I, okay next week i go straight to barcelona so it's kind of hectic again yeah. but then afterwards until end of September, I just play shows in Europe and I try to play like six, max, seven, eight shows. Yeah. And that's it. I saw you, like you announced you're doing Berlin again, first time in six months or something. Oh yeah, that was last, last three weeks ago. Yeah, it was three weeks ago. It was fun. Yeah. It was so good to play there again. Has Berlin changed? <sighs> A lot. A lot? I, I mean, I don't go out at all. Last year, I think I've only been out once. This year, I've been out three times because... Uh, friends of mine played in uh -huh. the city so i showed up um yeah i think it changed a lot yeah for the better for for the worse just different i mean the good thing in berlin is there are so many clubs there's such a huge like i, th I mean there is no bigger scene for techno and house music in the world than in berlin and so many people come there every weekend just to party mm -hmm. so if you don't like that place you go to another place if you don't like that dj you go to watch another dj yeah and like every half a year there is a new club a new bar whatsoever it's such it's growing yeah i, re I remember we went last last year in the summer it's just like the, the the clubs i mean you have the clubs that are clubs yeah they're they're intentionally built like clubs yeah. and then you have venues oh yeah they they just look like they're put together by some artists and super some random. music freaks super random yeah. it's like it, it just looks like an assembly of street art a lot of wood yeah and then decent sound systems and good djs yeah. and just partying 24 7 that's see i miss that so much here i'm in LA. always wondering yeah. when it starts to slow down because yeah. you know i moved there like oh six oh seven yeah and that's like yeah like what seven eight years ago and at that time i already thought like whoa i could go 24 7 mm -hmm. and now i think it's like even more you yeah know? yeah yeah now you have every day you have alternatives before you had one party a day exactly and now you're like where are we spread out go? all over the city you know like yeah. people have places where you need to drive for like 20 minutes right it's like i would have never imagined that out there somewhere like deep in the east there would have been a venue right and now people go there every weekend yeah like, whoa okay music wise what's going on i mean there was a huge house had a huge impact due to to a lot of foreigners who moved there and mm -hmm. the new labels who came out and i would say in the last two years it's getting more and more into techno because I mean, there was a lot of, I don't know, there was a lot of bad music out for a while and then people just get tired of it. Mm -hmm. So they want to have something new. I mean, it's always that way. It's coming you got to bring back the energy now. Exactly. And especially that whole impact Burkhine had. Uh -huh. um, and that's still the dominating sound right now. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, it's, it's, Kathy was just in Miami. She went to a Vision Quest party. Yeah. And they were on the deeper side on at some point, and she's saying they were really banging it out. Yeah, you know, like because you know there's the festival circuit, and I think in my opinion, you know, that I've always played deep house, I guess, but then there's deep house and there's deep house. Oh yeah, there's you know new deep house exactly which just popped up in yeah. the last two three years. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, and and I think there's a lack of energy in some of that. You know, and the newer because yeah. it's just flat productions. I'm not saying everything. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I I think it may I have to, you know with the production. 
Yeah. You know, you guys do a lot with analog stuff, right? When yeah, you, everything we mix it, you know. Right. I mean, plus we try to. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to judge it, but we just took try to keep it interesting you know it's not always the same bass line always the same that's R&B my point vocals, yeah it's always the same generic presets drum loops, yeah whatever, yeah loop masters crap so yeah and i mean it's hit or miss sometimes people are like whoa that's great and sometimes people are like what did those guys just put out but then yeah there's like another group of people who like it and maybe then there is like a nick von Schule who plays your music but just try to keep it interesting and some people they just don't want that and then they wonder how at one point people are fed up with their music and then they rather play some like Ben Clark tunes yeah and their careers yeah. played out and they're right like, Whoa. yeah they're just stagnant it doesn't go anywhere exactly yeah I, I agree you know I like I like that about Sewell for instance it's not like you know there's a sound but there's always like something coming from the left yeah you know there's yeah. always something hitting you from where you didn't expect it yeah and i think for especially for record labels producers you know you come up with new stuff but i think it's it's a label's responsibility to to offer that variety oh yeah because otherwise like you said you bore people and there are a lot of generic uh, artists a lot of generic labels it's a lot of safe production it's so easy to just put out music it doesn't really cost you're not losing anything maybe you lose time and a hundred bucks for mastering or whatever and and you you just people don't like to take risks that's a big problem and that brings me to your set. You know, you played, <laughs> you played a, 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 a night. I mean, I loved every song. Thanks. This is exactly what I always talk about. You know, th- there's got to be a trip. You got to take somebody on. Yeah. And there's got to be a mix of tech, deep, soulful, because yeah. it all mashes up together. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Do you do that at every every club you play, or do you read? I try and, to. Yeah. I, I mean. Do you know sometimes when you play in front of a huge crowd, you you just start like maybe more banging mm-hmm. for like the first thirty minutes, and then try to slowly get them into your direction. Exactly, yeah. and then maybe after one and a half hour, give them something where they're like, uh-huh. what is yeah, that? like a wake wake up call. But then they they like it because yeah. in the end, it's good music. Exactly. I mean, as long as you have some girls in there i mean you can't play a maxwell track uh in italy in front of 1500 people when ben clock played the night before that no. definitely no doesn't that work, doesn't work no out here for example when you have like 60 percent girls out there yeah they're like they love it they go nuts you know especially because i think you know there, it's there's a little bit of the the european touch i kind of have the same feel that you do where you got to bring in different styles i think I don't see that happening from a lot of different other countries. Hmm. Like in my opinion, people like uh, certain DJs, they dial themselves in to a certain sound and then they stay there. Yeah, because it's easy. Yeah, it's easy. It's safe. Yeah. Other people play that yeah. music. And we were joking about that a little bit. You played a Mr. V tune. Oh, yeah. You know, and it was a Jay Dilla tribute thing and beautiful track. And a lot of track IDs came in. And you, you got to kind of look outside of your comfort zone oh, yeah. to keep your own sets interesting. How do you discover music? I spend a lot of time online. I mean, I, I went to Amoeba yesterday. It yeah. was pretty interesting because I haven't been to a record store in a minute. But I, I spend a lot of time track shows, Beatport, iTunes, Bandcamp, SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. Um, I do a lot of mixes at home where I, where I mix like R&B, dub, whatsoever, mm-hmm. you know, like genres tempo whatsoever and um i spend a lot of money on music still because i'm just a fan yeah you know and yeah. it's like if there is a mr v tune or the a damon alburn if avici would do a good tune I right care less. that's what you know I'm what saying. i mean that's if true there's a good tune and i feel it bam play plus, it. You, plus you make it work in your sets oh yeah you know that's it's it's always a different uh context when you put oh, it yeah. in your sets Absolutely. it can be anything and um do you ignore promos like oh, yeah, well, right i th- i mean the problem is that why do people send you stuff where they should know you're not the kind of dj who plays their shit out you right know? but people just share your email address and then pff, you get you get the worst <gasps> tunes it's crazy it's it's gotten to the point you know i've i've created a separate inbox where all my promos go because 
you get promos and maybe they're from friends and you kind of feel pressure to listen when they pop up in your inbox. I have a whole separate inbox. I don't look at it. I don't see the promos when they come in. Oh, yeah. And then every two, three weeks, I go into that folder, spend three, four hours and go through it. But I used to listen to every single promo. I have four email addresses because of my work. Yeah. Because of, like from our labels to all. Yeah. Like a private one. And, you know, and I get so many promos on those four addresses. And it's just like terrible. Yeah. Yeah, and it feel, you, you know, need an assistant feels, just to it keep your email structured. When somebody he is producing music, he's putting effort into it. You get that mail and you just like delete it. Yeah, imagine I would send my music. I mean, I don't do it. Promo agencies do it, or my label does it. There is like a guy I'm a big fan of, Josh Wink, seeing my promo. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, what that guy sucks. Exactly. Damn. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's it's a really tough thing because, you know, like like many people in the business now, you know, both sides of it. Oh, you, yeah. you want to get your music heard. Luckily, with Soul and with your name and with your album and everything, you created a following where yours will not be that email that gets deleted. You know, in, in by certain people, yeah, I guess Richie Horton will not listen to an R&B track. I well, he never listens to it anyway. Yes, he has somebody else listening. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. which which is cool i mean you know I'm from i have some <laughs> friends in south africa too because if you're really busy i guess you can't listen to your own promos anymore i i got back also to buying music because it's it's you're curating it because oh, yeah. like you said when you get a promo i feel obligated to listen i feel obligated to like it if it's personal friends so every few months I go through my music folder and I look at it and it's like, I only kept this because a friend of mine made this. Oh yeah. So this, you got four email addresses. You got a blog, you got a Twitter, you got an Instagram, Facebook. Is social media taking off a lot of time that you should spend on work? Or is that work? Well, I mean. I'm gonna close the door real quick. Oh yeah. yeah. Answer the question. You know, I, in the end, I'm a child of that whole MySpace generation. You know, like, I grew up not living in Berlin, producing my first joints back then with Era. We uploaded stuff on MySpace, and then people just dropped us mails, like, or direct messages, like, yo, can we have this for, for our label, blah, blah, blah. So that's how I got out there, you know. Um, I, I don't have a private Facebook account. I deleted that because for me personally, that was just like the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. I had this moment where I was out in Miami uh, this winter lying on the beach and just, okay, just scrolling through your timeline yeah. and looking at what other people do. And yeah. you're like, what Why? are you doing here? Yeah. You're in Miami. It's amazing weather you have that ocean in front of you and you just look at what other people post and 50 percent of that you just you yeah just you don't care delete about them because you think like what an idiot because he has an opinion on whatsoever is going on in the world <laughs> so yeah and that i mean since that I, it's just facebook but also like with my fan page I don't, I don't try to spend that much time on it i don't like it it's like it's for me personally it's played out you know mm -hmm. it's like the last two, three, four years, it had such a huge impact also on the whole scene. And what I saw is that a lot of people, which I really respected and were a fan of, that they stopped doing music and always just about like, okay, how can I get like that post, seeing as many people getting likes here, getting likes there. Everything they posted was just like... To get the likes. To get the attention. I'm know? guilty of that at the moment. Because I'm doing it, a field test. That's just wrong. You it know? is. It it's is. in the end. It's about like music. Put yeah. out a good product. Yeah. I mean, look at people like Move D, for example. Yeah. My girl raps him, and so I just followed what he is doing, and he's he's just a great artist. He's a great DJ, great entertainer, great producer for like what twenty five years, mm -hmm. and he doesn't need to post pictures like like some random tech house guy putting his ear on the street and then like. <laughs> ear to the underground <laughs> and then some guys from wherever in the world yeah. are like yo you're so cool yeah no you're not cool yeah, you're yeah. a total douchebag you know <laughs> put out a great 12 inch and yeah. those guys who listen to your music and yeah. think like wow you're so cool but not like that you yeah. know what i mean yeah 
It's yeah, it's, it's <laughs> that's that's exactly why I'm asking you the question. It's a little bit of a dilemma. Once you reach a certain status, like Mufti, it's a good example. Twenty five years ago, so he had a chance for slow organic growth pre social media. Yeah. To to get a fan base, you can still do that now. Yeah. Well, I mean, for example, from Seoul, like Daniel Bartz, he yeah. had a huge hit and created a huge followership through that. And he could have gone like totally crazy, like doing that hit again and again, mm -hmm. posting pictures, posting whatsoever. But he doesn't do it. He's at home working on his music, trying to keep it easy. Hey. I appreciate that's that cool. way more. I, that's I so much that. cooler. Yeah, yeah. I've been, you know, like like I said, I'm I'm guilty of doing that. I'm trying to create, because it's it's not necessarily it, number one. It's about the likes. It's about how many people see your posts, and you see the numbers when you log in. So you kind of get manipulated. Yeah, you get depressed from that. That's you just totally wrong. do. Facebook actually <laughs> does depress that's me wrong. when I when I look at it, and. You, Right now, I'm doing a field test. I'm trying to figure out how can you maximize your reach. Of course, Facebook would like to get paid, you oh, know, yeah. for boosting posts and whatnot. And I do that in certain cases, because this is a business I'm actually making money with. Yeah. And I actually realized the majority of traffic that is not coming directly to DeeperShades.net is coming through Facebook. So the more views I get, the more views I get on the website, the more exposure my show and my releases get. So I'm trying to figure this out, but you can't only post promotion because then you get a people's nurse. So oh, I, yeah. I start posting, oh, yeah. you know, and, and I'm guilty of all these things. I mean, I've been guilty of this since the Internet started. I have had people unsubscribing from my newsletters with really, really angry emails. I remember one coming from Berlin, I'm not going to name names, telling me, uh, me and my friends, this was 90 Eight ninety nine. Me and my friends have decided that if we send industry emails to each other, they they should not have more than five hundred characters. And that's how he subscribe unsubscribed because I did a whole chart oh, yeah. thing and whatnot. You know, he's like, this is too long for me. So I've been I've been guilty of this thing. So you just go do your work, make your music, and hope it finds its way. Do you have a PR person doing? No, no. We I mean, what we do is. We work release based, so when I have like a 12 inch or I have a mix CD or, or an album, mm -hmm. we have a PR person for Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and we have one uh, who's taking care of the rest of the world. And I mean, that's important, you know, when you have a product. Yeah. Because you need to push the product. You want your product to be seen. I mean, you can also post it on Facebook. Yeah. Every 30 minutes and boost your post. Yeah. But no, nah, I rather have a person who's dedicated, who likes what I'm doing. Yeah. And then works on that. He knows which magazines, which blogs, which DJs. So it's kind of the traditional PR work. Oh, yeah. Classy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, a lot of people neglect that because with, with the era of digital labels, it's easy to, like I said, it's easy yeah. to put out music. It doesn't cost much to put out music. But you're also not learning any of the classical yeah. or classic way to have a record label. Yeah. Yeah. So I I got to figure out what I'm going to do because <laughs> I'm I'm posting a lot of things every day at the moment. And I know I'm getting on people's nerves. So <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, by the way, earlier, uh, a lot of people were commenting on your white shirt. Oh, yeah. You always wear the white T-shirt. Somebody was asking, what what's the deal? What's the deal with the white shirt? Um, is is there a particular reason? I just like him. I always liked him. I think. Um, I mean, I grew I grew up as a hip hop kid, yeah. so it was always like blue jeans or khakis. When you're from the west coast, from out here, <laughs> and white shirts, and mm -hmm. then at one point it was like stripes and whatsoever. But the white tees, I've seen that ever since like I started listening to hip hop when I when I watched like. Boys in the Hood mm -hmm. from 91. Mm -hmm. Ice Cube is wearing a white t-shirt. And I grew up and thought like, oh, that's the coolest thing in the world. Um, so, yeah. And I mean, it's just cheap. You know, I buy a shirt for like, what, $4? And if I don't like it anymore, I, I put it I into the that. Rest, I love Red that. Cross box. It goes to uh, Syria or whatever. And I don't feel like, okay, I spent 50 or a $100 dollars on, on a, a shirt whatsoever silky smooth shirt and then i feel <laughs> like 
what a, it's just you need a shiny shirt oh yeah <laughs> yeah a lot, a lot of you know I, I catch myself i've <laughs> i've made like deeper shades shirts so i sometimes wear them yeah but i think the white shirt or the uni colored shirt you, you wear one as well no yeah that's you one's... could sit here like totally brand yeah I exactly i sometimes do when well, i do but... that's so, and sometimes i do that when i do the show yeah when i record my mixes because i want to you know like is, you push the product yeah, yeah you yeah. want people to buy it because yeah. we gotta make some money somehow i i should do that as well but yeah i'm sorry guys no it's a trademark by now by now everybody people, knows people drop me mails like which brand is it <laughs> and you're like you gotta say kanye it's you, you know he did yeah. that white shirt yeah, for like for what pc yeah yeah, yeah yeah oh goodness i think you know I, i've asked a few guys also what's your size for a shirt i want to give them a shirt oh, yeah. and they're just honest like listen you can give it to me but, but I don't probably i'm just gonna wear it at home oh yeah because when i play out you know once you start getting into that i'm gonna play or i'm gonna wear a label shirt you gotta wear them all or whatever you know so yeah that that was one of the questions let me see what i what i have here <laughs> oh this isn't a good one i i actually want to Maybe do a book with a compilation about the best and the worst DJ experience. You don't have to do both. You can either pick the best or the worst. Okay. I mean, I know that you got a huge fellowship out in South Africa. Yeah. And, uh, but it's true. Like the first gig I had with that Jack, you know, Jack in South Africa, mm -hmm. up at, where, at Johannesburg on that roof. The warm up. The warm up. Yeah. That was uh, definitely a game changer for me. I mean, I've been around before, but that was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. That was like, serious, whoa. Yeah. I was there with my girl, and we got up there, and we were like, yeah, okay, cool. That's like a great party. But then when I played, mm -hmm. that energy, mm -hmm. I get the chills talking oh, yeah. about it right now. You oh, know? yeah. Oh, but yeah. That, was, uh, that, was, that was special. Um, I mean, yeah, just. I had so many great parts. Just now I've heard a week or a couple of weeks ago. Cause mm -hmm. It's like those places where you go and you don't know what to expect. That's always the best parties. It is because expectations can only be disappointed, really. It's you like know. so many clubs you heard about and yeah. everybody's like, oh, that's the place. Yeah. And then you play there and you're just like, okay. Eh? Yeah. Why? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Do so you just talk about it because you want to get the booking again there? So yeah, Mexico City, uh, I played the three times in the last three years so good yeah so good the worst yeah i mean i had like a i had a bunch of really bad experiences in germany because it's just like you go to places and they don't care about the music i mean it's, it can happen everywhere in the sure. world but there are certain certain areas in germany where mass sound just doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. and you need to realize that mm -hmm. you play there and you give it another try and maybe another try and they pay you good money and it's it's just like what like an hour flight from berlin so it's easy in and out but you, you just realize it doesn't make any sense so Do you turn down those things oh, when yeah. you can oh, smell yeah. it before oh yeah you're just like i'm just gonna have a headache no, if no, i no. do it's this just that i'm telling my agent like why yeah i will have no fun right they will they will hate it no fun yeah so you're why? not gonna go back there and i you know if i would be like a superstar dj <clears throat> where they at least make tons of money and yeah i would make tons of money yeah we can talk about it again right but like that come on book another guy who fits to your crowd yeah who maybe is even local perfect who already plays what you exactly want and, and i have you know i have a daytime that's exactly why i have a daytime job yeah because i don't want to be in this position like oh i need to take that game you gotta to get a rent to pay my new whiteies <laughs> no <laughs> well they're cheap so that's yeah. like one one gig fills up a whole suitcase oh yeah that's, that's true <laughs> yeah man that's that's the worst when you're when you're playing a gig and you really don't want to be there the worst and it just gets worse yeah and then the requests come yeah and then ah uh, and the next three days you're still like Ugh. oh my god no that's see that's okay you play a lot are you still self-critical at the end of the night <laughs> always do you have a hard time sometimes you're like oh that sucked so bad and i'm, I'm i think people know that i'm the first one who who's like just be honest because i felt like after an hour i lost the people mm -hmm. or like after one and a half hour when i played that maxwell tune mm -hmm. i lost the people mm -hmm. 
just tell me to my face because yeah. I tell you to your face. Right, exactly. That's a uh, um yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I've had it's that. It's important. Too. I mean, I you know I want to have a relationship with those guys. I want if I like it, I want to play there again. Yeah. If it's okay, I want to play there again. Mm -hmm. And I, as we just said, I, I pick like gigs and I neglect gigs. So mm -hmm. it always has to be like on this honest level. Yeah. Um, so you want to deliver? Oh yeah. Obviously, I mean, that's my that's my job. Right. That's my obsession. You know, yeah. I go there to deliver, and yeah, people should have a great time. When you when you when you get booked, and uh, let's say you have like a one o'clock time slot, or here in LA, probably midnight or eleven thirty or whatever, when do you usually show up? Like, okay, I, I, as time permits. Sometimes I know you know connections and all that. I started this thing that I uh, requested an early dinner. I mean, besides that, I don't want to eat too late, but mm -hmm. I always try to eat early and then go go to nap. I always nap. Mm -hmm. I mean, I work a lot and I, I don't go crazy. Mm -hmm. Stay up for like 12 hours in the club, listen to the warm up DJ, and then after party, after party, and oh, another after party. And then airplane. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, it depends, you know, and it's a great club and it's another DJ I'm really interested in who's playing the warm up or it's a festival whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I show up earlier. But most of the time i'm like yo just pick me up like 45 an hour before and then yeah, yeah i think that's, that's a good it. time that's that's what i try to you know you kind of get in the vibe what what the club's into oh, yeah. when you get there and you don't play exactly the song the dj played 20 minutes before <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it can happen man yeah you know i played cape town and people all kinds of rumors started i basically i played warm up in Joburg, an early set Got to the airport, flew to Cape Town at seven. Plane was delayed. I basically arrived, I think, eleven hmm. twenty, straight to the club, started playing, and then the next day I'm reading like posts on Facebook. It's like I can't believe he thinks he's like so good that he doesn't need to show up earlier. He's disrespecting the DJs before him and all that. That's but bad. that's you know going back to social media. You know, before, like you said, you had to actually go up to a DJ if you want to get the message to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Now with Facebook, as soon as somebody hits like on your fan page or befriends you yeah. or whatever, they are you close friends or there's some somehow of a personal connection yeah, for some people. Yeah. So they feel like they can just uh, make up all kinds of stuff. Do you deal with, uh, do you have crazy fans? Or have you been lucky so uh, far? Uh, you know, I had like a bunch of people. I'm a big sneaker head. Yeah. And I think everybody knows that by now. And uh, I remember I've been in Nike because they gave me some free shoes and I was there with an artist of mine. And we just posted a random pic just like bullshitting around. Yeah. It was like four. It was the same shoes in four colorways. So like left, right, one color, like four different colorways uh -huh. like uh, yeah just posing, posing around yeah, exactly. yeah sure and there were like 20 people who were like ha 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 yeah and there was this one person like do you know who did those shoes and do you know there is blood on that child's oh fingers? no you're kidding me like um oh, am i making it political oh yeah right and i guess you bought cocaine on that weekend from a guy uh who is like whatever and do you know where that cocaine is from oh, no so please get off my fan page idiot <laughs> and then i had like a bunch of those guys yeah i just blocked them yeah of course I don't give a f you know ever ever had that on a personal level it's because yeah. this is just social media like hey yeah exactly you ever had to the spin and roll exactly kind of like it's, get away and just like yeah it happens i mean you know it's it's hard sometimes it's hard to tell if they're really into your music no they're not or if they're just a little have yeah, don't, the, screw there's, loose. I mean, that's the problem with the internet. There's yeah. a lot of psychopaths right? out there who just who get closer to you because of the internet. It, I think they don't even care about you. It could be any other DJ, any other, uh, whatever. Prefer, yeah, just somebody who's known. They exactly, just gotta dial exactly. in, in the focus on yeah. the spotlight, and then make up their own little world based yeah. on the social media interaction. Yeah, I get that sometimes. But luckily, you know, it's it's so diverted. Like you said, South Africa is all over my Facebook. 
So they're gonna they're regulating themselves. That's that's a nice thing about the mm -hmm. whole Facebook. If somebody spreads a rumor, somebody else usually clears it up and yeah. puts the people into into place. That's my son, Matias, somewhere. I heard a way. There he is. Oh wow. <laughs> Little He's man. playing outside. He's just home from school. Yeah, we're in California, by the way, if you're listening somewhere. It's uh, 1.30 in the afternoon, starting here early to reach Europe. And we had a lot of people listening from Germany. I hope so. Berlin was in the house, Nuremberg. Uh, we had some people from Hamburg and, of course, South Africa, California. We had a few people who went, went to the party on Wednesday. So I'm, I'm uh, going to keep doing this thing. I want to go back to the agency for a minute. Yeah. Um, you deal with mostly like the, the the artists that are on the same labels as you or is how no, 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 how's no. the roster selected my my question is yeah. because we have a lot of people who want to be a dj or maybe are a dj and want to learn a little bit how does an agency build the roster our agency is it's small we just have like what 12 15 artists mm -hmm. um Okay, so I mean, I I went with like my best friend. We started out doing parties in like mid nineties mm -hmm. in that area where we grew up in northern Germany. She got a child two years ago. I still got my career going on, so we both don't want to work twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. And you know, we got to this point where we decided we'd rather keep it smooth. Just have a bunch of artists each, mm -hmm. where it's good to work on people we like, where. We like the music. We like the character. Mm -hmm. We don't want to work with Assholes. somebody who, yeah, who's yeah. like super, super big. Yeah. We earn tons of money, but he's like the biggest dick in the world. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I work with six artists. None of them is attached to my, my, to Suol. Yeah. And, um. I'm actually really happy about that. Besides, I'm the only artist who's uh, from Seoul who's with another agency because, you know, I, I, I'm working in my own agency. I can't be an artist in another agency. It's yeah. Like, it's, a, it's, it's a little it's iffy. A tricky one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean... So you stick with your roster or you expand it? Or, and I've been working with, with those guys now since like four or five years. Yeah. Uh, I have one artist I've been working with for a couple of, I would say like six years and we just stopped working together last year because we just got to this point what I just said like somebody turns he just loses it and mm -hmm. acts like the biggest dick and mm -hmm. you just say okay f goodbye it. yeah yeah peace out yeah try your luck somewhere else yeah you can't you can't have the negativity again. because especially as an agency or in, as a brand and and you know in general you're trying to portray to be somebody and you have another person out there who's part of your group mm. they're representing you so if they're acting like <laughs> what up little man <laughs> matthias <laughs> a little quiet we're doing an interview here <laughs> it's hilarious funny enough i used to love this about john peel Oh, I never listened to it. Oh man, John Peel was recording. He was his show was on BBC and yeah, then yeah, brought know, like syndicated, like Giles later. John would always record a show in his living room. He had his little studio, and sometimes his kids would come in. And it's for that's that's for me that oh, the whole wow. radio thing. That's why I love this. It's real, you know. Yeah, it's real. It's live. And because I'm doing these live sessions, there's nobody telling me you got to cut it short. Oh, it's, yeah. it's an open end thing. Yeah. You know, you, you can talk. And so what? We have the window open. It's California and Mati is playing outside. <laughs> um, hip hop. Are you still following? Are you still in it? Or oh. is electronic pushing it aside? No, actually, I listen to more hip hop than I listen to house. Because you listen to house all the time when you play? Yeah. And I mean, I, j I just love hip hop. It's like that whole just the vibe being yeah now here in la driving around in the car for like three four hours a day mm -hmm. there is no better thing than listening to k-day i mean mm -hmm. that's just brilliant now you just play zap and roger back to back oh. the whole album just cruising <laughs> it's so good you know <laughs> but yeah there's a lot of great hip-hop artists there was a there was a like a phase where i didn't listen to hip -hop at all because mm -hmm. i just didn't like what's happening mm -hmm. but the last three four years it's getting really interesting. There's a lot of good stuff. I've been finding, you know, usually I, I reach out 
to people on my Facebook. I'm like, you know, let me know. Do you have any new, yeah. you know, because you, you can't know everything, especially when you're worried about buying music to play out yeah. then spending all this time to buy music to listen. There's so much on Bandcamp, for instance. People who never, never had a record deal. Ending. Never ending. You and the quality. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I just talked to Cats and Dogs about it because mm -hmm. they were looking for like vocalists for their album. Mm -hmm. Spread the word out there. No. Mm -hmm. um, and I just sent them like link after link after mm -hmm. link. And Wojtek, one of them, he was just like, oh. Yeah. But I mean, you need time, you know? When, yeah. When you're in a job where you do like a radio show, mm -hmm. okay. I just do that because I want to listen to the music. I want to mm -hmm. have feel good vibes at home. Mm -hmm. When I work on the agency, I don't want to listen to the latest tech house twelve inch because no, I can't, you can't. concentrate. Yeah, on you my gotta work, chill. You know? yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, of course. What's what's like a, a, a new new hip hop group you just came across or that just kind of came up again in your head? Anything new or? I mean, like. I just yesterday I saw that XXL magazine freshman video. The, every year they put five rappers in a in a position like the freshman uh -huh. this year, and there is a uh, chance the rapper who put a mixtape out last year, which pff, it's just like pff, game changer for me. Uh -huh. And then there was this guy uh, Vic Manza, who's also from Chicago brilliant and then uh i don't know how to pronounce his name it's a tough one ishaya rashad he's signed to the label i've seen the Kendrick name Lamar, yeah and he just did an album slash ep earlier this year it's like super laid back great voice so yeah but i mean i, I also like drake I, I love kendrick there's a lot of those like i don't want to use the word mega stars but who are just like pop stars you know crossover yeah, I mean, somebody like Kendrick is yeah. huge. Yeah. And I'm following him ever since his first mixtape. Uh -huh. There's a lot. There's so much, so many. I love parts. music. I remember I, it kind of slowed down for me, the whole hip-hop thing. I still listen to what we have. You know, we have, like, my wife and I together, me alone, but us together with CDs and whatnot. We have a pretty big library of different kinds of music so we listen to it all you know pull out some dilla and all that yeah. little brother and all that good yeah. stuff i haven't had the time to really look into the new things besides those facebook posts i remember being back in hamburg my roommate constantine who's working for word and sound he's such a big music head and we would just listen to new albums and just sit there and maybe get stoned maybe not and you just listen, and I got, I used to get so much more excited about hip hop than I did about house. Yeah. You know? Because even if there's a good house track, it's, it's, it most of the time feels like formularic. You know? The, you know, the difference is those guys don't make money on records anymore. When I see somebody like Rick Ross, mm -hmm. for example, where mm -hmm. you think, hey, it's Rick Ross, mm -hmm. and then you, you see, I mean, you can see what people sell these days. And he sells records like, I don't want to drop names, mm. but people from our zine, like people who, who, who release an album which got super successful. Mm -hmm. And you just say, wow, this guy pretends to be like the super mega Michael Jackson whatsoever yeah, star. Yeah, yeah. But um, he sells like 70,000 records or something. Mm -hmm. Give me a break. You yeah. know? And then like those kids who just drop mixtapes yeah they have to put out quality they don't yeah. have the chance to tour i can play every single weekend three shows mm -hmm. and get like steady cash flow yeah they don't sell records they don't play gigs they don't play gigs okay they can sell drugs I yeah mean, great you know but if you want to work on your career yeah if you want to make it you have to put out it quality quality product so you cut through the noise yeah, exactly so where where's the is this just in my headphones no, or is no. it yours too yeah it's, a, it's I the don't know, nsa maybe. you just dropped the word stone oh, is the that NSA is? Is oh all my god on 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 <laughs> my on my mixer that's not even wi-fi <laughs> <laughs> what 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 is gonna have to happen for for music like you said, for, for people to make, s like, have it make sense to keep making music, besides the heart, obviously, that is the, a big motivator for people. They love the music and they want to put music out there. Sales are going down. 
gigs, there are only so many venues in the world for all the artists to yeah. play. Uh, file sharing is impossible to fight. You can somehow control it a little bit, but in the end, it'll take over. What what's gonna happen? How is how is music? We were we were like downstairs. We were talking about like licenses for for movies, mm -hmm. advertising. What do you think? Where where do you see this whole thing going for independent artists? I think that in general, right now, there is so much attention on our music. It got so big. And so many people got into it and then they want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. I really hope that at one point people want to do other jobs again. Don't get me wrong, but that it's cool again to be a whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say a carpenter, but just like... Yeah, so not everybody has to be a DJ. Exactly. Yeah. Um, because like this is just too much. It's, it's like it's too many artists, too many labels. Yeah just doesn't work out so we need know? some darwin up in the music <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> it's um because when it, you just see what happened with with electronic music yeah. in the last five years yeah you can go to switzerland mm -hmm. and there i don't want to use the word city being in la talking about a place with ten thousand people yeah there. yeah and they have a club right so I fly out of Zurich, and I, I mean, I think I'm quite good in geography, yeah. and I never heard of that place, yeah. and they drive me for like 45 minutes in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. and you see cows and mountains, and it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and then you wonder like, hey. How is there a club going on here? And for a year, it might work, but yeah. then afterwards, people are just like, hey, it's every weekend the same people, so we got to go to Zurich again, or whatsoever, uh -huh. because it's a bigger scene. Yeah. No disrespect, a lot of people who start something in random places, it's mm -hmm. good, but it's healthy in a way, but at one point it's just it's just too much. You yeah, know? oversaturation. Exactly. And um what we just talked about music with the promos, everything, it's just too much. It's it such an overkill. It is. So I really hope that people will realize that and so basically, we're asking all the people who know that their music is crap to stop today. Uh, I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say uh, that. Uh, well, no, we but didn't you, name I, like, names. Talk about, you know, I yeah. just, what I just said earlier, yeah. I've been to Amiwa yesterday and yeah. I went to that. They got those massive crates with, um, like, second hand. Mm -hmm. Those are the dangerous ones at the, Amiwa. The used, the used ones. And I just went through the, the house, Electronica. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of records I had as well, mm -hmm. like like Straight Ahead, Jazz and Over. Mm -hmm. And then there were a lot of records from that period when Minimal was super big. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of records, or I still have a lot of records as well, because mm -hmm. I don't want to throw them away, because right. I don't want to throw records away. Right. And I know I can never sell them because nobody will nobody ever wants them, no. buy. Oh, like, uh, I wonder what that is. Well, yeah. we have both here. I think it's the headphone thing. Yeah. So let's ignore it gracefully. You you just see all those names. Yeah. And you wonder like, oh yeah, right. What happened to this guy? And I always do with Tiger Skin as well. Yeah. When we, when we in the studio and we just like joking around, we just talk about. Oh yeah, I saw that guy the other day in the streets. Yeah, what's happening with him? And I remember a lot of people are disappearing. When when I started working with the agency, we had artists on our roster who were quite successful, and then they just stopped. Now nobody cares. Yeah, I mean, you know, so that will happen now as well with all those guys who just came out now. You know, some people just stick with it. They yeah. go for the long run because yeah. it's their life that dedicated to it right if they make tons of money so they Great. can buy something yeah or if they realize you got to work somewhere and yeah. then when you come home after your nine to five you just work on your beats and then put them out i mean just when you look at all those detroit guys so many yeah. of them they have regular jobs they put out the best well, they music. have to exactly yeah they have to but that that see that that kind of goes full circle again they can use the social media to get the product out there because they do the quality, but many of them don't get to that point where they can play the three gigs a weekend 
to make up for the money that they have to earn in their regular job. Right. It's because like you said, there's so much music out there that even for the real good stuff, it's hard to break through, yeah. right? Because yeah. how do you get it? You got to find it yourself. You don't listen to all the promos. Just just when I take Alex, for example, Tiger yeah. Skin, yeah. a lot of my friends are like, yeah, we love him. He's the coolest guy in the world, but he just put out so much music. It's so hard to to just check what's the great track mm -hmm. and whatnot. So it's too much good stuff. It's so much good stuff yeah. that people don't even realize what yeah. kind of, for me personally, classics he put out. Mm -hmm. Like what we just talked about, that Mr. V track. Yeah. I play like an old track he did a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and there are five people all over my ass like, what's that? What's what is that? that? What is that? Oh, it's yeah. the Tiger Skin, blah, 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 yeah. B2. What? Yeah. See, that's the you thing. Know? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's what I kind of did pride myself on. Like I said before, I used to listen to every promo to find that B2 yeah. that everybody missed. But it, like that the, should be our job. Our yeah. job as DJs, people doing radio shows. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, give the people something they don't hear everywhere else. Exactly. And have the balls to actually do it. Because like you said, yeah. you know, it, 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 it gets comfortable. It gets easier. It gets it's more safer. And, and, you know, it sometimes happens, you know, when, you, when you're looking for a certain track and I want to play this one, ah, let me just put this one in because I know it keeps the floor going. I think that's the moment for everybody where they, they take it on forever. When you, when you play a track they never heard before or they forgot about mm -hmm. and then it's happening, they're like, wow. Right. And they still think about that weeks months oh years yeah afterwards. it usually takes another person to play the track yeah. that you have for you to to actually uh appreciate it yeah that's my fear looking at all my vinyl i've been going through it recently i got <laughs> about 700 out of this whole thing that i easily can get rid of because i just sorted out the records that i have no personal connection with there's a lot of music in these shelves i never play anymore but I want to keep it because I remember buying it. But yeah. my biggest fear going, I listened to every record I pulled out. They're in the garage right now. My biggest fear is missing a B2, mm. going to a gig in three weeks, hearing a track, really rocking out to it, having that aha moment, going to the DJ, asking what is that, and realizing I just gave that record away. Yeah, That's my biggest fear. Yeah. That's like, it's, it's forcing me to become yeah. a vinyl hoarder. Yeah, no, I just stopped. <laughs> or music records. order. My, my drives, too, the digital thing. It's the same thing. I say it's easier to delete an MP3. Yeah, but when you have, I mean, when you have an external, you just buy a new one because you got to do backups. Anyway. Sure, it's but so when are you ever going to listen to it? My, my music, my, the drive I travel with right now is 500 gigs. It's like 30,000 tracks. I will never need that. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. You know? <laughs> But I can't, even if I put, sit myself down, let's say I'll take five hours and yeah. I try to sift out thing, music, I maybe get rid of half a gigabyte. Yeah. Everything else is like, oh no, there will be the day. And I will never play those songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, thank you so much. I think we cleared up a lot of things. Thanks for having <laughs> me. Anytime when you come back, um, you know, studio is going to be either here or somewhere else, but there will be more Deeper Shades live sessions. Cool. Any of your artists, if they ever have downtime in L.A., yeah. you know, this is the place to be, Deeper Shades. <laughs> Are you going back to South Africa anytime soon? Uh, yeah. Um, I haven't been there last year. Yeah. I would definitely want to go there this year. So, actually, because um, my parents spent a lot of time down there, that's uh, the only reason, or, like, the main reason why I got down there so mm -hmm. more like my connection is um so this year I want to spend Christmas with my parents in Cape Town oh cool so yeah summer in Cape Town connect me if you want a random German guy playing at your party Cape Town right now is happening man They're, they've had um they've had who was Janina was just there Kravitz yeah oh wow yeah she just played Cape really? Town yeah wow. Mandy Mandy was her? there I know right <laughs> Mandy was there just yeah. a few uh, days the ago. The last show I played there was at that place. Man, Cherry. 
Hmm? What was that place called? Chuckachuri in in Cape Town. See, I was Cape that Town. Was great. Yeah. Yeah. First time and and only time I was in Cape Town was this last December. That's when that whole thing, you know, I had a great time. Oh. I really enjoyed myself, and most of the people did too. Besides, you know, a handful of Facebookers. But that always happens. But you know, that's the thing. We we take our stuff serious. So if somebody is. Yeah. You know, if they're talking shit and they have a reason to, like you said, we're all behind this, like I agree, but if they're just making up shit. Anyways, enough. We already went through this. Thank you, Till. This is going to be um, on YouTube, you stream deepershades.net. <sighs> See, perfect. Now they're mowing lawn or something out there, or drilling. Anyhow, we're done here. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Thanks for having me. And um, the mix is going to be on one of the next Deeper Shades shows. Oh, cool. Maybe there's, there's probably going to be a lot of track idea requests. Maybe we'll find the time to yeah, get you there. Yeah, tell them to, to, to write me on Twitter or Facebook. Yeah, or comment on it when it's on the website. Or yeah, sure. I'll, I'll get the idea request cool, to you. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I think that's it. Um, look at that. Thanks for tuning in. And um, Deeper Shades of House 452 is coming up soon. And that's it. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. Peace out. And uh, until next time, bye-bye.